change. وقال الله عز وجل إن سورة مريم هل تعلم له سمية رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما فاعبده واصطبر لعبادته هل تعلم له سمية Lord of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them So worship him alone and be constant and patient in his worship. Do you know of any who is similar to him? And from the attributes of Allah, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed to himself, is the istiwa. Qala Allah ta'ala, ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa. The most beneficent ascended or arose over the throne in many places in the Noble Quran. So the benefit from this is that we affirm the attribute of istiwa to Allah, a real and true attribute. We know what it means, but we are ignorant as to the manner and the how. And the meaning is ala wartafa rose above as came on the Arabic tongue and Ahlul Sunnah are in agreement on this meaning as to the manner of his istiwa no one knows of this except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from this is the attribute of Hearing as in Surah An Nisa 4:58, قال الله تعالى: إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا. The end of the verse, Allah is ever all hearer, all seer. فَيَسْتَفَادُ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ What's to be taken from this verse as a benefit? And the like, of course. إِثْبَاتُ صِفَةِ السَّمْعِ لِلَّهِ Affirming the attribute of hearing to Allah. وَالسَّمْعُ فِي لُغَةِ الْعَرَبِ And the term سَمْع in the Arabic Language is Idraqul Aswat, comprehending the voices. So we affirm to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a hearing, comprehending the voices, not resembling any of His creation in that. And we assign the how of this attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we don't say kayfa yasma the manner of his hearing we don't ask how wala nakhudu fi dhalik and we don't indulge in this because Allah did not make this known to us rather he kept it with himself similarly in this verse, we learn that he is the all-seer. From this we know from this seeing. Al-Basar in Arabic, Idraqul Mar'iyat, comprehending the visible things. 
as it is affirmed in Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Abi Musa al-Ash'ari, may Allah be pleased with him, that, إن الله لا ينام ولا ينبغي له أن ينام Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not sleep and it does not befit him to sleep يخفض القسط ويرفعه he lowers the scale he lowers the scale and lifts it يرفع إليه عمل الليل قبل عمل النهار the deeds on the night are taken up to him before the deeds of the day وعمل النهار قبل عمل الليل and the deeds of the day before the deeds of the night حجابه النور الله أكبر his veil is the light لو كشفه لأحرقت سبحات وجهه من تها إليه بصره من خلقه his veil is the light if he withdraws the veil or uncovers it the splendor majesty the splendor majesty and greatness of his face would burn his creation as far as his sight reaches as far as his sight reaches so we affirm a true sight to Allah comprehending all the visible things however كيفيه هذا البصر لا نعلمه the how the manner of this sight we don't know of وانما نعلم rather we know ما علمنا الله what Allah taught us in his saying ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير nothing is like unto him and he is the all here or seer these are some examples of the path of Ahl sunnah concerning the affirmation of the names and attributes of Allah the most high so therefore we have faith in all the affirmed attributes to Allah without number one without denying them or their meaning and this is known as ta'teel we don't make ta'teel we don't deny them nor we deny their meaning secondly we don't indulge in figurative interpretation of them and changing their meaning and this is called tahrif thirdly we don't indulge in explaining how they are and this is called takif and fourthly we don't liken Allah's attributes to those of creation and this is called tamthil this is our creed with respect to the names and attributes of Allah tomorrow inshallah we'll go over the creed of Ahl Sunnah concerning Tawheed Al-Ilahiyya the Tawheed of Divinity singling Allah alone in worship and what does it really mean Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi sahbihi wa sallam